Ustamanka! Hey, we're here today. We're going to try to make some guacamole. One of my favorite things about the Philippines is guacamole because the avocados here are huge, they're fresh, they're super cheap, and delicious. So let's just uh, get a bowl. Let's start doing a little chop chop and we'll uh, make up some guacamole using all local ingredients, all stuff available at the market today. And of course that means it might not be everything that you want in there, but let's have a look. Here's some of the ingredients we'll be using today. Um, you can see some nice fresh Roma tomatoes, which are basically the only tomatoes you can get in the Philippines uh, that are ripe and good. The rest are, the bugs get to them right away. Um, some fresh garlic, some fresh chilies or silly as they're called here, an onion. Um, there's a couple avocados there and some fruit just thrown in for looks. There's a cincado, I believe it's called, and mango steam. I'll show you those later. But for now, let's have a look at these avocados. Okay, this is an avocado. <laughs> this is a big avocado. Um, this is like the Mexican ones. I'm not sure if it's actually a Haas avocado or if it's a version of it, but they're very, very delicious. What I found interesting is you go to the market and you ask for a big avocado and you get this. Now this is a big avocado. This is a green avocado. Um, these things get way bigger than this. This is, uh, this is a good size one, but you can get them um, uh, five pounds probably. This one's probably two pounds, maybe a little lower. You can get them up to like five pounds, maybe even bigger. It's just the biggest ones I've seen. So. I haven't tried it yet, and I'm not going to use this one today because that's going to make too much guacamole for me to eat in one day, possibly. But uh, this will be made, I'll uh, make something out of this, maybe avocado fries, or uh, there's a lot of different recipes. Avocados are really good for you, contrary to what everyone likes to tell you, that, oh, it's bad, full of fat and that. There will be a link on the, on the video or underneath the video to a really good website that explains the health benefits of avocado. They are very good for you, and I don't believe anybody. It's the best food. Tastes so good. I mean, why wouldn't you eat these every day if you could? In the Philippines, you can. I'm sure most of you know how to uh, open an avocado, how to peel it, whatever you want to call it. Very easy. Twist, open, sink your knife in, twist, out, done. These grow easy. Plant this outside, bam, avocado tree, five years. Okay, so then I grab a spoon, of course I don't have one. I'll just spoon the avocado out. Very easy, gentle in there. It's gonna, you want the green part, the very dark green. That's where all the antioxidants are. All Basically the best part of the, of the avocado is this very dark green part. So you wanna try to get all of that out of there. That's a lot of avocado. Half of this is more than probably two normal ones. Perfect ripeness, very easy to pull out, delicious. So avocado into a bowl, and of course onions the next big one. Get it out of the way. Um, you can't get local onions here. Um, a lot are imported. It just depends where you're at. The local onions are just usually quite a bit smaller than the big ones. Uh, when I'm making anything, avocados or guacamole, any kind of dip, anything like that, I like to vary the size of my pieces as it goes in. Some people like small, some people like large. I kind of like just to throw whatever in there. It's all good. So a bunch of onion into the bowl. Tomatoes, fresh Roma, I got a terrible knife, got to remember, I'm a foreigner living in the Philippines, I can't afford all this fancy kitchen equipment, hence you probably see my sky cracker bowl, well, what I'm trying to do is trying to make things that are healthy for you, good for you, easy to make, um, and available local, so you don't have to search all over the place trying to find driving to the city, as I don't live in the city. 
I live out in the country. Well, I live in a small city, but but very limited shopping. You're not going to find a lot of products you would get in the city. But in a way, it's a blessing because it forces you to find alternative products at the market and make them work. I think it's every bit as good, probably better, because it's fresh. It's right from the province. I like lots of tomatoes in my uh, guacamole. I don't know. It's uh, healthy, good for you. And of course, the old standby, got to have garlic and everything. I put all the juice and everything in too. Standby garlic, got to have garlic and everything. Um, I hate peeling garlic, it's a major pain to me. Um, it's very cheap here, so I don't mind wasting lots of it. Just to pull out simply the middle pieces, I chop the tops. The bottom's off. Yeah, I'm getting the major part of the garlic to me. Garbage. I don't want to make it a big pain peeling little pieces of garlic all day long. Usually I would get my my better half to do a lot of the prep for me. She likes to cook. But she's shy. She doesn't want to come on camera. But she will be on camera in uh, other episodes, of course. Uh, I'm going to do a whole bunch of local foods, plus foods, comfort foods from home, made here with local ingredients. The garlic, I like to chop up a little finer, a big hunk of garlic on your chip or in your taco or on your sandwich, whatever you want to make with your guacamole, can be a little bit too much. So, um, hot peppers. Uh, there's lots of different varieties of hot peppers here. The main ones are these ones, and then there's small little ones, little tiny like Thai peppers that are really super hot. These ones are pretty hot, have a nice earthy flavor to them. They're not, uh, I don't know if you know what I mean by earthy, but yeah, they'll taste like dirt. <laughs> I like lots of hot peppers, um, very, very hot, so I tend to put lots in, and once again these ones you want to chop up a little finer, but I don't want a big chunk of uh, hot pepper in it because uh, I like hot stuff, so to me, very good, very good. Okay, so let's just call out a day on that. Um, these are called calamansi. It's uh, basically a cross between an orange and a lime. You can kind of see. You can kind of see how, I don't know if you can see it or not, but they're kind of orange inside. It's got an orange tint to it, but they basically taste like limes. So squeeze these in. Squeeze some limes in there. Helps to keep it from turning color, from turning black right away, and it just adds to the flavor of it. It's actually really delicious. Um, the later episode, I'll make some calam calamansi juice. Maybe throw some rum in them and uh, show you. This is uh, they're available everywhere here. Uh, they grow everywhere. Just, it's, it's hard to go anywhere without finding a calamansi tree or two kicking around the countryside. Every market has them. Um, you don't get a whole lot of juice out of them, but it is good juice. They're kind of dry. I don't know if that's just because I'm not getting them fresh, but I think I'm getting them fresh. Everything at the market's pretty fresh. I mean, there's no refrigeration or very little refrigeration in this country, so when you go to the local market, um, you kind of tend to look if you're buying seafood and that. For the people that do have ice, a lot of people don't have ice, but if you go early in the morning, there's a lot of choice. 
I'll show you on a later video a tour of the wet market. That's uh, pretty impressive. The amount of stuff there, like I don't know what a quarter of it is. There's all kinds of eels, snakes, octopus, you name it, it's there. So now we have basically our ingredients in there. And now it's just a matter of chopping it up a bit and stirring it. Uh, some people really, really, really like to mash their guacamole up into just the mush. I like to leave some fairly good chunks in it. It's uh, it's all your personal taste. I mean, you want uh, you want food that's been through a blender, or you want to be able to recognize every bite as you go through it. To me, I like big chunks of stuff in there. So stir it up. That's about where I like it. That's it. Guacamole, delicious, fresh, smells awesome. Um, of course now there's other things you could do. That's a basic guacamole. What I like to do at this point is even though it's hot, I still like some more hot sauce. Uh, habanero, super hot, smoking. Gotta put a good dose of that in there because I like it. Um, now I didn't add no salt or pepper to it. So instead of salt, myself I prefer to put in fish sauce. This is Thai fish sauce, Chuck Friend, local brand. Uh, it's really good salty. It's, uh, that's, so that's where my salt base comes from. Give a dab of that. And of course, I just like oregano in it. I don't know, just something about it just adds a little bit more dimension to it. A little bit more flavor. Don't want to go overboard with it. And some black pepper. Which, uh, Sorry, I'm cooking on my kitchen table because the lighting here is very bad. <laughs> and in my kitchen, so I'm just kind of doing this in there. Giving it a quick stir again. You can see it kind of uh, it's getting creamy already. It doesn't take much to beat up. It was, a, it was a really nice ripe avocado. So it didn't take much to get that all together. Nacho chips and stuff here is another whole thing. You can find them. They can get them. Some of the major brands in the city and that. But I mean, I come to the Philippines. I don't want to eat that. I'll eat the local stuff. And the local stuff's not, there's not much choice in corn chips. There is corn chips, they're very tiny, but they're all right. I like to make my own. That'll be another episode. But corn chips are good. Guacamole, corn chips, you can't ask for anything better. It's perfect. The avocado is perfectly ripe. It has that flavor that just, you don't get in a can or something on the supermarket shelf. All of it all mixed together, the hot peppers, the fresh tomatoes, it's so good. And taste the calamansi in there, the hot peppers. Mm. The only thing really missing from it, cilantro. Now you can find cilantro in the Philippines. Usually in the city, sometimes in the smaller markets. Here locally it's called one soy. Um, the locals don't use it for cooking very much, so it's hard to find. You have to find somebody that's growing it somewhere that's bringing it in. But you can go to different markets. Lots of different markets have lots of different products. We will go to the Montalungong market this week. I'll take the camera up and show you some of the stuff. This is a market high up on the mountain. Um, very few foreigners go there. Not foreigners <laughs> go there. But it's quite nice. Um, you can find fresh mint. Uh, there's, they have stuff that's just not available even in the city so much because it's right there. It's local. People bring in what they've grown this week. Once a week market. Very good. Um, super cheap. It's good. Okay, so uh, that's guacamole in the Philippines. Uh, it's very easy. Now we'll make something to go with the guacamole. So this is basically what the guacamole looks like when it's done. Um, very fresh, very nice. Um, I'm so hungry, I'm going to eat all of this. <laughs> no, I'm going to make uh, tacos or something to go with this. So thanks for joining. Um, see you next episode.